when I was working in a movie theater in high school in Greensboro, North Carolina, I met a 40-year-old man who was a projectionist at the theater. We began a intimate relationship. He became my boyfriend. I eventually got kicked out of my house uh, for bad behavior and I moved in with him because he's like, you know, we're already dating, you could live with me. After living there a few months, um, he asked me to be a part of his art project. He was like, you could be my number one model. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll be your number one model. So the pictures were more innocent in the beginning and then they became more sexual and I was forced to do unthinkable things. He did drugs. Uh, there was times I'd wake up, I didn't know what had happened to me. Uh, and I'd be naked on the kitchen floor. He's like, oh, you were just sleepwalking. And I believed him. My chains were invisible, but they were so strong and they were so long lasting. There's this huge misconception with human trafficking that you're taken somewhere. It looks different. There's so many different faces, which means we have to work harder than what we're already doing. This is a crime that knows no boundaries or barriers, um, has no classifications. It is simply that you are vulnerable and someone came along to take advantage of that vulnerability. The stories that I hear, I mean, sometimes it just break my heart. They withhold food from them. They have no problems beating them up, locking them in closets. Um, it, you just wouldn't believe some of the things that we've heard from the clients that we've worked with. But the key thing is that we cannot eliminate human trafficking alone. We need each other.